All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a, another episode of How I Met Your Mortgage. I see that I've got some updates to make in that software, but uh, live video, live audio, that's the way that these things go. I'm Adam Smith with Just the Tips Coaching, and with me, as always, is our marketing director, Jen Weibower. Good morning, Jen. Good morning. And our guest this week, we've been pretty excited to have for some time, probably months and months if uh, memory serves, uh, maybe even six or eight of them. Um, but uh, Luke Wyckoff, good morning, Luke. Welcome. Let me uh, get that out of the way. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Jen. And good just morning. a little bit of background for our audience. Uh, Jen and I had made it a pretty regular habit of attending Social Media Day. And one of the speakers at Social Media Day this past year was Luke. Uh, in fact, Luke was the closing speaker and probably the single best presentation we had seen at a Social Media Day event ever. Um, as far as I can recall anyway, it was captivating and entertaining and interesting. And if there is anybody involved in social media day events that knows the technique of speaking by telling stories, which we all know in the presentation world is crucial, it's Luke. So Luke, thank you for joining us. We were really excited to have you. Glad to be here this morning from home, like I'm guessing a lot of other people are. <laughs> So. Yeah, probably just about everybody watching, and certainly Jen and I are as well. Uh, it's uh, become our usual MO anyway, but uh, this is obviously a new world. Um, and let's delve into that subject, because obviously it's uh, the way of the world for just about everybody today. What kind of things are changing in your world from a shelter-in-place type of order? What kind of adjustments have you had to make thus far? Yeah, there's definitely been adjustments. One of the biggest things we've seen, uh, Adam and Jen and the rest of the folks who are listening, is that a lot of people, they've never worked from home before. And so we're seeing that um, people that they're not used to having video conference calls. They're not used to, they're used to being in the office where people can just walk by and have a conversation with them. And so all of a sudden people are either very inefficient or incredibly efficient. And we're seeing, we're seeing that on both sides where people all of a sudden have so much time throughout the day that they're starting to, you know, binge watch Game of Thrones again, right? Or, or they are in just trying to get focused with their team, right? Being able to figure out how do we communicate? How do we talk back and forth with each other? And you're seeing all the stats on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and, and, and LinkedIn completely shooting up. Um, people are finding more time to write. People are finding more time to publish. Uh, people are finding a lot of time to do some of the things that they've always wanted to do. Uh, but right now, it's right back to what I call basics, Adam. It's 101. It is, I've never worked from home before. How do I even, a great example, we have a, a there's a $4.8 billion company that sits up in Broomfield, Colorado. And I was speaking with uh, the, the CIO of that organization. We were talking about you know, wanting to train their employees on how to work from home for the first time. And he was so honest with me, Adam. He says, Luke, I'm trying to get people to understand what a VPN is right now. Mm -hmm. Right? How do you even connect to a VPN? How do you even connect your computer into a network so we can at least work? That's at the, for a lot of people who work from home, we're all shaking our heads going, you've got to be kidding me. But the rest of the world, right, who has never worked from home is now all working from home for the first time. And they're thinking to themselves, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this. And so that's one of the that's one of the biggest struggles that we're seeing right now. Adam. And that makes a lot of sense. While Jen and I and everybody else on our team on uh, both sides, both the uh, just the tips as well as our uh, mortgage company are making adjustments, mostly psychological, I would assume, to working from home. But we don't have any issues when it comes to the technology, the ability. Everybody's had the ability to work from home. We just don't. And what you're saying here is that the majority of the world is actually having to make those first-time adjustments, those psychological adjustments, those work environment adjustments to working from home because they've never done it. They've never had the ability or the need to do it before. 
Yeah, that's that's exactly what's happening. And and you know, in my world, in your world, you know, we've either worked from home or or spent multiple days at home doing the things that we do every day. So it's just kind of second nature to us. Where there are people who are now going on day three and four without showering, right? They're like, I can't even I can't even figure out how all of this is gonna work. I've been coaching people, I've been working from home since 1993. Okay. So it's so people I've been talking with people and saying they're asking me questions all the time. What are some of those basic one-on-one things you could be doing to working from home that will help you, right? That will help you in the future uh, to be more productive. And my first one always will be have a routine, especially in the morning, right? You get up, you've made your bed, you've showered, you've put on some, you put on some clothes. I don't know if you remember the the books from the '80s that used to say "dress for success." Sure. These were uh, some great psychological research statistics that said that people that actually dressed up when they went to work actually were much more productive than people that were not. And so I'm not saying that you have to wear the full suit in the house. Obviously, even a collared shirt and, and a nice pair of pants is is uh, is psychologically preparing you better than a pair of uh, cutoff jeans, which by the way, no one should own cutoff jeans, by the way, unless you are (laughs) tuning in from Alabama or Georgia at the present time, cutoff jeans are not part of the new black. All right, so let's let's go there. All right, Um, one, I've got to admit, I didn't realize we had to wear pants today, so I'm gonna just put that out there now. All right, Um, but I do think that there's some legitimacy to that. Yesterday was a fairly typical Sunday for me. I did a little bit of work. I did a little bit of work around the house. I took a long walk with my son, and it was probably 10 o'clock at night before I realized I hadn't even gotten in the shower yet. Yeah. Um, yep. And yep. that it yep. had to be done. So that routine, and on a weekday, it's certainly easier to do. And I certainly would emphasize the importance of it. I still get up with the alarm. I still get on the treadmill. I still get dressed and come into my home office rather than commuting to the other office. But yeah, I do think that that routine is part of what's keeping me sane for the last couple of weeks. No question. Yeah, that's you know having a great routine is good. And then you know this is now this comes from a guy who for the last 12 years has been the founder of social media energy. I'm telling people to put away social media for right now. That's it is, interesting. So it is distracting people to the point where they're just obsessed almost with how, you know, how are you doing? Let's talk about the one question that you don't start off with. How are you doing? Everyone's doing about the same right now. You know, it, I love the empathetic way of, of going about that. There's other ways to do that, but People that are on, they're sitting on Twitter or sitting on Facebook, and I've got friends who, you know, they can they can monitor from a distance the productivity of their employees when they're working from home, and they're saying, "My goodness, you know, they're spending you know five and six hours a day on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and just a couple hours a day on their their regular jobs," and and they're they're asking me, "What's the solution for that?" I'm like, "Well, don't turn it off because then you turn off people to society, right? You're turning." You're blocking people from being able to connect with. And by the way, 90% of them are going to use them right off of these things anyway. So if you block them from your from your VPN, then you're going to you're going to have them on your phone anyway. But I'm I'm telling people to relax a little on the social media. And I got a great idea. Get up in the morning and make five boxes. All right, five boxes. These are five things that I'm going to get done before I close work day today. And just see how much more focused you get when you've got those sitting right in front of you the whole day. Because I've had a couple of friends who I've ran through this very simple exercise with, Adam, and and what's happened. And Jen, you'll appreciate this, especially being in marketing, right? Is that you get to you get to two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, and all five boxes are still there, hmm. right? You haven't even gotten to them yet, right? Well, what did you do with your time? Right? What did you do with your time? Go back and look. What did you actually do with your time? So those are the working from home things, guys, that we're actually just kind of really watching right now and focusing on. We've seen a lot of other trends that are starting to shift, but that's kind of the big ones right off the bat. Yeah, and I would have to agree. And anybody who knows how I actually operate, all of our coaching clients, certainly Jen and the rest of my team, I am anal retentive about my calendar. I time block in five minute increments 
I do. I literally do. Uh, if you ask me what I'm doing from 9 to 9.05 on September 20th of this year, I could tell you. Um, and I think that's really part. It's not a five box checklist, but it is my own regimented sanity of making sure that everything that I need to get done during the day is getting done. I don't do checklists. I don't do post-it notes, but if it's on my calendar, it'll get done. Yeah. And that's, and you, you're hoping that we could, I, I'm that way also, Adam, just to let you know, and I'm, and I'm segmented out throughout the whole day. A lot of these people were all, uh, a lot of people who are working from home right now for the first time, their entire calendars have been driven by what's happening in their offices. Right. So all of a sudden they're home and they've got, there is no meeting. Right. There is nothing going on. There might be a video conference call for 30 minutes tomorrow at si at 7 p.m. What happens between right now and tomorrow at 7 p.m.? Where are you adding value to your company, finding ways? I think this is a great opportunity for people who um, who are working from home to step up. Right. And contribute to an organization by finding creative ways to be adding value to the company if you can't be in the office. That's brilliant. And yes, there. No, don't get me wrong. I don't think that this is an environment that is limiting us. I think it's giving us the opportunity to come up with more ideas, creative ideas. How can I be more productive? What kind of systems should I have in place? It's, oh, yeah. There is so much opportunity in being given this time to get organized, to hit a reset button of sorts, uh, that I, I think if people really take advantage, that it will pay dividends for everybody in the long run. Yeah. And, you know, if I, I, before we get off of this topic, which is obviously the topic of the day, and I didn't want to get too dark too fast, but this is something that everyone's struggling with right now. There are a lot of people uh, who struggle with addictions hmm. and leaving their home was what was saving them. Yeah, so now there's a really good point there. Now they find themselves at home surrounded by all of those things that either made them take drugs, opioids, uh, alcohol. And, you know, I've I'm celebrated, just celebrated four years of sobriety and have brought uh, 12 CEOs and executives to sobriety in the last four years. And we lost one last week. That's right? We are, we are starting to, because the tension and the pressure of working from home and not being able to leave is now taking people who have issues, have real issues with uh, anxiety and stress and addictions and, it, and it's uh, pushing them over the edge. And so I'm really hoping that those people will reach out to other folks and connect like we're connecting today. You know, pick up the phone and connect with someone before you make that decision to do something that you, that you probably shouldn't. I would agree. Um, I'm not much of a drinker, although I had been in yester decades. Um, and I, I can see you in like I can see you in like a Def Leppard shirt, right? <laughs> there was probably a right, time, no question. Up right, yes. up front, right up front of the stage, you know, you know, opening up for Metallica <laughs> or something. I can totally see you there, rocking it out with a bottle of Jim Beam. So I, I can. Your, yes, your yesteryears are coming back to me right now, Adam. They, and, and unfortunately, you are not that far off. We, uh, we know each other amazingly well, considering we don't know each other that well. Um, <laughs> but I agree with this concern. I, I have not had a drink since Jen and I were in Orlando a month ago, no. give or take. Uh, and it was really right when things started becoming real. In fact, when we were there, we were at the PodFest conference, and that was when Disney announced they were closing. That, In my mind, that's when it got real, because Disneyland had only closed two days prior in its entire history, one for an earthquake and one for 9-11. So for Disney to shut down operations made it very real in my mind. And I haven't had a single drink since then because I'm worried about it being a slippery slope. Um, when is it acceptable? Does it become more common? Am I now drinking every evening? Am I now drinking during the day? Am I over drinking? And I'm actually really terrified to even uh, open that floodgate to any degree because of what it might 
result in. And at this point, all we know right now, of course, is that we're all sheltered in place for a solid month yet to go. And that's a long time for somebody who's dealing with that kind of an issue. Yep. And I think I think the, the roughest times are going to be the next two weeks. Okay. I think the first two weeks, we're trying to adjust and figure it out. The next two weeks, I think are going to be tough. And then I think the two weeks after that, people can see a light at the end of the tunnel so they can get through it. Okay. So I think your next, your next, our next 14 days is going to be, is going to be tough. And people that are, are working from home uh, and staying at home with their family and their kids and their dogs, I have seen some of the most hilarious uh, happy hour, video happy hours, right, that people are doing. One company, I was on with a bunch of CEOs on a, a meeting like this a few days ago, and their entire company at noon every day goes live they have a live zoom meeting that just goes live and everybody has lunch together oh that's they, cool they don't talk about that's business cool. they don't talk about anything else they just get everybody together and you can walk away from the computer and go get your stuff and everyone's showing their animals and they're like oh carol i didn't even know that that you owned a lizard right because all of a sudden there's <laughs> a lizard like pointing right at you right there's a little lizard and and so you're learning all these great things about people. Kids are coming in and they're hugging their moms and dads and, and they're doing this. They're doing it for, there are groups that are doing happy hours. Of course, I just talked not about alcohol, but they're doing group happy hours. They're, they're finding creative ways to keep people connected in a time that we are so isolated. A group of colleagues uh, that I have, mortgage lenders from all across the country, have been doing a Friday happy hour. Uh, not uh, drinking per se, nothing like that. Just hanging out. Some of it's business. Some of it's, hey, how are you dealing with the kids being out of school? Um, a good example is that I'm refinancing my own home, obviously, um, and the appraiser is coming tomorrow. So I asked what everybody thought about what kinds of precautions should be taken, so on and so forth, what the conversation with the appraiser looked like. Um, but in that arena, uh, something that was really creative, and it wasn't my idea, credit where credit's due, um, this same group did an online poker tournament last night. Nice. So, yeah, we all logged into some software that hosts online poker tournaments, and uh, 16 of us played cards. It turns out I still really suck at poker. No surprise there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we did a Zoom meeting in combination with this poker software, and uh, it was really a good time. It took a couple hours, and it was a lot of fun. A great way to socially connect a Sunday evening. Absolutely yeah. nothing work-related. And yeah, it really uh, made us more socially connected while being socially distanced. But on that subject, Luke, of people working from home and kids coming in and the, here's my lizard and so on and so forth. What kinds of tips do you have for people to be both personally productive and psychologically productive in this new environment for them? Personally productive. Um, I've got two things that uh, one of them we talked about, which was, you know, or two of them we kind of talked about, which was making your list of five things you want to get done today sure. and starting your day with a routine, right? Psychologically, uh, I have seen something that uh, has worked so well, and I share this with you and, and your audience because I've never seen anything work so well, and we have the time to do it right now. A lot of us, you know, we say we don't have the time to get this done and that done. Well, guess what? Right now, we do. And this is such a simple exercise. And if you do this for 20 days in a row, your life literally starts to change. And so all of your, all, everybody who's listening in, hop on Amazon right now, right? And grab those markers that are fluorescent, right? That you can write on a mirror. Grab those markers that you can write on a mirror. You're gonna order those up and when they get delivered, you are going to start off each day and write down three things that you are grateful for. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then you're going to take a picture of that and keep it on your phone all day where you can see it. At the end of the day, you're going to keep a little journal right there in the bathroom and you're going to write down what those three things were. You're going to erase them next day, rinse and repeat. Can't be the same three things that you're grateful for. Watch what happens after 20 days of full on gratitude where you've drawn it up, you've looked at it all day, you've written it down and you've done it the next day. Let me help everyone out with this. It takes less than five minutes. 
That's a and great it, exercise. It, you talk about you talk about psychologically getting yourself happy, excited, motivated to do the things that you're going to do every day working from home. That is by far the best tool that you can have. And it literally changes your perspective on how you see everything around you. That's fantastic. We, we teach the three song psychology to all of our coaching clients uh, to pick those three songs. And I'm not going to mention mine of a time you felt particularly loved, particularly empowered. And when you really feel like you're in the groove and listen to those three songs every morning, first thing. Uh, oh, I've got to know what your songs are now. You can't. T- you can't. Uh, well, that's because you, you think it's Def there. Leppard, <laughs> Def Leppard, and Def Leppard, uh, which, which makes sense. Yeah. And actually, that's funny that you mentioned that because we know full well, um, and obviously the state of the world is kind of making this a little unique, but you do a big event for uh, PTSD victims that includes a lot of uh, 80s music, some real bands, your band. Um, Why don't you tell us about that? It's called Freedom Fest Colorado. And right now, we haven't officially canceled it yet. It's June 26th and 27th out at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in Golden, Colorado. Uh, It's an event that's been going on now for five years. Uh, The Friday night is like a scotch and whiskey tasting with two country bands. And this year, my band was going to be playing. Was, I say, I'm guessing we're probably going to end up canceling it. Uh, But then the next day, we just fill fill the campgrounds, right, with... Uh, with all of these great bands from the eighties, right? We've got Loverboy as the, as the, as the big uh, band this year, we have Ace Freely, right? From Kiss. We've got Jefferson Starship. I mean, it's supposed to be, it was supposed to be an amazing, you know, rock star list of people that, and all the money goes to help soldiers who are struggling with PTSD. And it's a, it's a wonderful rock out party. Dean Gary, from Remax, actually, is uh, is the guy who's been hosting this. He's the he is your Harley Davidson connection, and uh, and talk about folks in your business and your world. He's the one who spearheaded this and founded it years ago. I'm just blessed to be uh, uh, part of the group and partnering with it. We obviously do all the social media, so if you look at the uh, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter accounts for for Freedom Fest Colorado. We're, we're, we've been asking people questions, right? What was your favorite Loverboy song? You know, what was your, we're getting we're getting people engaged and excited, even though we don't know whether the event's going to be happening or not. But you know, that's a that's a big that's a big place for for SME and other or other organizations to want to give back to to that group uh, to those group of people. So, and give us that website again, so Jen can put it in the feed here. Oh, freedomfestcolorado.com okay. is, is the name of it. It's uh, like I said, it's a it's a wonderful group of people. They really, really do everything from their heart, and all the money goes to uh, all the money goes to the soldiers. This so- this sounds like a great event. I certainly hope that you guys are able to put it on, and uh, if not, then we'll keep an eye out for it in 2021. Adam, maybe we'll have to have you backstage with your little microphone here going oh, live, my. right? Here we are going on awesome. with Ace Freely from Kiss. Hey, what brings you to Colorado <laughs> yet again? Why do you love coming to the, the Mile High thing? And, and you know, you know, what type of makeup do you really wear when you're not? <laughs> the, all the questions I always wanted to ask Kiss. I mean, you've Absolutely. Always wanted to ask all those 80s rockers. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's been one of my favorite parts of, because they keep saying, we donate all of our time at Social Media Energy. We donate all of our resources to... Freedom Fest Colorado. And the reason why we do that is one, we believe in the mission. But personally, are you kidding me? I get to be backstage doing all the photography, right? With all of these people who I loved seeing in the 80s and 90s, right? You're, you're back there with Kip Winger and you're back there with, uh, with all of these. Oh, they're just so much fun to bring them to Colorado. This sounds amazing. No question. And you know, that reminds me, and I know you had discussed it at Social Media Day, you're a photographer and you're actually a hell of a photographer. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm glad I got all of my international needs met uh, last year when I was uh, when I was overseas. I lived in uh, Jordan, Greece, 
Israel, South Africa, Vietnam, and Japan last year, uh, working and freelancing with National Geographic and just doing photography for the University of Colorado. I'm the advisor to their executive MBA program and I was traveling with the students. But when the students were traveling, I mean, when they were studying, I was out with the camera capturing the culture, the people, the animals of all the different regions and the places that we were around the world. Probably one of the neatest things I've, I've been doing that for the last three years uh, throughout the summer. And what, a, what an amazing way to see the world and be able to um, just capture the beauty of this, of this incredible planet. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm a little bummed out. I'm, <clears throat> I'm just a few uh, days away from a very monumental birthday, right? One of those birthdays that takes you into the next decade of life. All right, so I'll be going into my 30s. And I'm thinking- I knew that was coming. I'm thinking to myself, self, what would you want to do for this monumental birthday? And I befriended one of National Geographic's top photographers uh, when I was in Israel. And he offered to have me on a shoot, take me on a shoot for 10 days anywhere in the world uh, where he's assigned with Nat Geo. And that was my, that was going to be my gift to myself. And so obviously I was supposed to be uh, um, working with polar bears in the month of May. I was going to oh. be uh, following the migration patterns and the, and the, um, and the, I want to say polar bears having sex, but that doesn't sound right on a podcast, right? It is, you know, following all of their mating of, rituals, mating rituals <laughs> and following everything. And just being really part of, you know, living in igloos, doing the whole thing for 10 days. Obviously, all of that is canceled. So I've got to, I've got to figure out what else I could do for the, for the big uh, birthday that's uh, coming up. But it will be something photography related. If I'll just find some, another place on the planet as soon as they lift travel bans. Oh, I'm sure that that is heartbreaking. What an amazing event that would be. And, you know... <laughs> We may be well ahead of this. Obviously, this is a relative unknown. The next 30 days are going to unveil some interesting things. So um, we'll just have to take it as it comes. Hopefully there will be a, a big 80s concert out at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in June. And as we were talking before the show, hopefully we'll have the uh, Mile High Mastermind in September and all kinds of other things. We know that the entire world, all of you watching, everybody has things hanging in the balance that way. Um, and my crystal ball is in the shop. I can't give anybody any kind of foresight as to what the future holds for May or June or September or 2021. But I do think that uh, we are improving upon our position as a uh, society and making steps and changes that are going to benefit all of us in the long run. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that people don't delay decisions in, in these times that we're in right now. Right now, let, let's take your industry, for example. Interest rates are still very low. This is a great time to refi. It's a great time to buy a home. It's a great time to get out there and, and make some of those decisions that you were going to make anyway. I'm hoping people don't sit back and think, ah, maybe I shouldn't do, right now is a great time to make those decisions. Go out, look at houses, look at different places. This is a wonderful time. Um, we've never had interest rates so low. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to be in your industry. The only other industry that could be doing as well as you might be doing right now is my buddy Kyle back in, Michigan, his company makes commercial chemicals for cleaning. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's going to be right up there with the people. better than Kyle. There's nobody that's living the life like Kyle's living right now. Yeah, Kyle's right up there with the good people at Sherman. I agree. Yeah, Sherman. <laughs> yep. Yep. Absolutely. 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 But I mean, it's, you know, I'm just a lot of people, when we go through situations like this, they tend to want to hold back um, their decisions. And right now, is that doesn't help our economy and it doesn't help at things we're doing. We need to continue to move forward and make those type of decisions. And so uh, whether it's your industry or other industries, I hope people will get out there and continue to um, buy, spend and help everyone else around them be better. And wash your hands. And wash your hands, please. 
All right. Well, Luke, I cannot thank you enough for uh, coming on the show. I can't believe how quickly a half hour has whipped by. Um, Jen, if you can convince Luke to do another episode sometime down the road, I would really love that. And uh, that'll give a sample opportunity to continue to twist his arm into speaking <laughs> at the Mile High Mastermind in the fall. Um, but Luke, thank you so much for joining us. Not a problem, Jen. Give me enough time to grow a mullet out. I'll throw on the whole 80s outfit. We'll start the whole 80s conversation. It'll be great. We're, we're going to do a, a, a costume-themed, an 80s hairband-themed <laughs> podcast that week. Absolutely. Uh, we'll grow out the mullets. I'll get a, a Def Leppard tank top on. I think I still have one from when they performed at McNichols Arena, as old as that would be. Um, but, uh, yeah, that would, uh, certainly be a good time. So I'll bring the 86 poison poison. poison. There's a good one. I, I might have a quiet riot shirt somewhere as well. Quiet riot. That would be fun. To have in Denver. <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you watching either live or in syndication, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, if you'd like more information about Luke and his event, please uh, check out the thread on the video. Uh, if you want more information about just the tips, if you want to know more about Jen, if you want to be a guest on the show, if you want a copy of my book, Just the Tips, Use that text code at the bottom of your screen. You can text TIPS to 63566. And we will undoubtedly see you guys next week. Luke, don't go anywhere. I'm going to run our extra and we'll continue to chat. Excellent. Have a great week, everyone.